Well, it's Friday. I've been doing Genesis 1 all week, so let's just do Genesis 1 one more time. Now, tomorrow for our Bible study, we're doing Acts 6, and so you'll be happy to know that we will get out of Genesis uh, for that. But but for today, uh, let's do Genesis 1 again. Yesterday, we did Genesis 1, 26. Let's look now at 1, 27 and following. So, God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over the every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, See, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food, and it was so. Now, if you've ever wanted to make a case for vegetarianism, there it is right there. Uh, it says that, that every uh, grain on the earth and every tree that bears fruit that has a seed, that's the fruit for the human beings. And all of the other green plants are the the uh, the food for all of the other animals. Now, we don't have to make a case for strict vegetarianism here uh, because uh, Genesis 1 is not a cookbook and Genesis 1 is not a science textbook and we know that there's a much bigger thing it's trying to help us see here. And here is uh, what, what it is. We have this radical statement in there. God created them male and female. And when this was written, that was a radical, radical statement because most people didn't care about where women came from. Women were just objects to be used. Women were second class. Men were seen as the pinnacle of creation. But here clearly in our scriptures, we are told human beings, male and female, are the pinnacles of the creation together, not just one, but together. And they are standing side by side. And the job God gives them is to have dominion over all of the earth. But again, the sense is that they are doing this together. And when it is said that, that they will only eat vegetables and the animals will only eat uh, or, or eat plants and the animals will only eat plants, the idea here, the picture that is being painted is a world that is harmonious, beautifully harmonious. There's no organizational chart here for, uh, for the people. There's no uh, a boss and subservient, not in the male or the female, but also there's no indication here of masters and slaves or of kings and, and subjects. Yet there's this wonderful harmony where everyone is together living in harmony. And when we pray, uh, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, that's actually what we're praying for, that, that God's harmony would reign. And all of the wonderful images that we get of heaven in the scriptures are images of wonderful harmony, of men and women living together in harmony, of people all living together in harmony, even the lion laying down with the lamb. This beautiful image of harmony is what uh, Genesis is setting up for us at the very beginning. And although we've lost that, and we've lost a lot of that, we know because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, the kingdom of God is breaking in upon us now. And so we, as part of the church, are called to participate in and create that harmony however we can. Paul was able to write again radically and prophetically and, and way ahead of his time. There's neither Jew or Greek, male or female, slave or free. And I like to say that sometimes one of the ways that, that we can uh, distill that out is uh, Paul is saying, God is saying, it doesn't matter who your mama and your father are, Jew or or Greek. That doesn't matter. There's no that, that that doesn't limit you in God's kingdom. Male or female, doesn't matter what gender you are. That doesn't limit you in God's kingdom. Slave or free, it doesn't matter white collar, blue collar, top of the org chart, bottom of the org chart. None of that matters. That doesn't limit you in God's kingdom because as Paul says, we are all one in Christ Jesus. And if we could get to a better part where we are constantly seeing others as 
one with us, one in Christ Jesus, equal with us. And we have different roles to play, and so I'm thankful that I get to play this role. I'm thankful that, that the way I am able to make my living is to get to study the Bible. I mean, you should be jealous of me. I get to do this for money. <laughs> That's the way that I'm able to put food on my table. I'm so thankful for that. I'm glad God called me uh, to that. But God called you to something else, and God called you to do things that I can't do. And if I were to say, well, because I have been to seminary and because I have studied the Bible that I'm somehow better than you, what a m bunch of malarkey, I guess, to, to quote our, our current president. Uh, but here is the wonderful, wonderful news that we see in Genesis and throughout the Bible. God created us as wonderful, diverse people because God loves diversity. God loves for there to be all kinds of different colors and textures and flavors and, and how thankful we are that, that you can see behind me greens and browns and yellows and God created all these wonderful colors. And when we get to eat whatever it is that we're eating, we get to experience all of these different tastes and God even does that among human beings. And rather than that being a limiting factor or a way to judge one or another, that is a way that we say, thank you, God, for creating us as we are, each of us a work of art. So as we go into this weekend, be aware, God loves you. God created you as a work of art. Whether you're Greek or Jew, male or female, slave or free, none of that matters as much as it matters that God created you and you are created in the image of God. And you can go into the weekend taking that knowledge with you, that joy with you, because, of course, God is with us. Amen.